we are here with one of the biggest growing companies in a, in a niche that is growing enormously, and it's Bavarian Simtech. As you can imagine, these guys are not from the UK, these guys are not from the USA, these guys are from Germany, from Bavaria, uh, near Nuremberg, if I remember correctly. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And we're here with Kolja, who is uh, the boss of Bavarian Simtech. And I'm saying that they are growing enormously because they told us they have grown by 300%, 300% since 222. Uh, they have the problem that they have sold out a product that they released in uh, August already. Now we have middle of October. Other companies would love to have these kinds of problems. 2019, okay. I founded the company. Um, back then, it was still, I was doing it part time next to studying and I always had a passion for sim racing. I was starting at that time, just entry level, wanted to build my own steering wheels. Steering wheel was also always, you know, the best part on the rig for me. So I started with a 3D printer. It, has grown really fast because uh, people on the internet had interest in my in my reels. I posted on Reddit and got like an insane amount of likes and everything. So then I was like, okay, now I want to make my own wheel. Before it was always blueprints from the internet. I wanted to do my own wheel. So I from university I had access to an uh, CAD program, so I could start with my first reels. And the first wheel I did was the uh, Omega One, um, and it's. It took about two and a half years to develop because <laughs> I had like no clue. I started uh, CAD, uh, CAD programs, no clue at all. Electronic design, no clue at all. And then I also learned, you know, how to do uh, electronic design. Yay. Yeah, it was not too much fun, but, but now I'm very glad because when you can do everything yourself, it's, uh, you're just so, so much faster. When comparing us to other companies, in the, in the time we can develop something, it's just very quick. We know that uh, we're going to be hearing bigger news from you and Assetek as you have been already working with them closely, but it's going to get closer. And I, I know that uh, nothing of it can be disclosed, just uh, you're going to be working closer with Assetek in the future. Uh, we definitely plan to and want to, and uh, we are actually. Um, exciting stuff is going to come. It will still take a while. I call it entry level. I mean, of course, it's still a very expensive wheel, but it is our entry level wheel. It is a 295 millimeter wheel and... Ah, just my size. I would first start off by saying that we pay a lot, a lot of attention when it comes to grips. Because grips are the most important thing on a steering wheel. If the grips are bad, the wheel is bad. It's just no, it's just, there's no in between. So. Designing these grips, we had like a couple of molds, which were expensive. We had an insane amount of numbers of 3D prints, which are actually still laying around in the company. So we all the time we 3D print a grip first, and then we see how good it is, drive with it. And what usually what every wheel, uh, what every steering wheel manufacturer does, what we also did before these wheels is you uh, you mold the grip, so you design it in a CAD program. And then you basically design the thumb area and just extrude it 90 degrees onto the wheel and then make a, a plier radius and you get your grip. But we made it di different this time because when I looked at my uh, thumb position, I realized my thumb is not 90 degrees like this. <laughs> no, it is at an angle. Exactly. And that's why we came up with our 13 degree thumb cut because I measured with a lot of people, it's around it's around 10 to 15 degrees, how they have their thumbs in there. And I think you really feel the difference to other wheels that your thumb, it's, it's meant to be, you know, for a thumb being at an angle and not being straight. So that was the first thing with the grips. And again, I think the most important thing on a wheel. The Alpha features 10 illuminated push buttons, which I would say is pretty standard nowadays. Um, but one thing we also stand out again is our adaptive beam tech. It's something brand new we invented. It is a combination between an encoder with 13 individual LEDs around mm -hmm. and the magic behind it is generating absolutely zero light bleeding in between the LEDs because as you can see, the zero is off and it's, it's really off. You know, you don't see any red on the yeah. zero, you don't see any blue. That's the whole key behind it. 
and you basically combine an encoder and a multi-position switch in one. What Adaptive Beamtech also has a great technology is that you have ABS and TC position for every car dynamically. So if you go on iRacing and for example, you go on a Porsche, it will show you like uh, off position and red, uh, blue, uh, red mappings and yellow dry mappings. But for example, the Mercedes AMG GT3 is exactly the opposite way around. Oh. The mm. ABS off position is on the 12th position and a lot of people don't know that. And then they drive in their completely wrong position and we are all not, we want to be professional racers, but we are not. <laughs> and we often switch cars so many times that we, that also I'm confused, okay, which TC position am I in now? Like, what, what does this not, what does TC3 actually mean? And with Adaptive Beamtech, you know it, you know, just at first mm. sight. So can we get a, a, a detail here? Because when I move this, you see the green changes. So I know exactly what I'm checking. Like, am I doing TC? Am I doing differential? What am I doing? And, and the green changes. I like, I like the color scheme. Can the color scheme be changed? Yeah, like with SimHub or something like that? Everything can be changed. You can okay. have it in complete red. You can have it in complete green. Mm. Actually, this switch has another feature mm -hmm. because it's the same as the upper ones. It's a, it's a regular encoder. But because you have eight different modes, you have basically eight encoders in one. So I can, as you did, you we go on dash, or let's say we go on fuel, which is now selected. When I now push it in and turn it, we can actually change the fuel. So we ah. can say like fuel down, fuel up. But it doesn't stop there, it actually goes further. What we can also do is, this is our uh, uh, multi-selector, but now we can enable a link between the uh, multi-selector and the thumb wheel. And basically in whatever position this is in, this also changes its value. So right now I can control fuel with this one. And let me put it on TC2, now I can control TC2 with that which one. Is, which is great while you're racing. Yes. Because you, you don't want to be fumbling here no. while you're racing, but if you just use the, 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 the thumbs, great. Uh-huh, okay, cool, all right. This is the newest model that, 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 that you have on the market? No, it's, uh, it was launched two months ago. Actually, the newest model was launched five hours ago. That is our newest model we have. It's our flagship wheel. It has pretty much everything a racer would want or can dream of. We have a 4.3 inch 60 hertz display surrounded by glass with uh, 15 ref lights and six martial lights, illuminated button like on the Alpha, six thumb encoders, adaptive beam tech at the bottom. You actually have two additional switches on the rear side ah, in yeah. addition to the pull like pedals. The, like the GSI SimuCube, the X29, I think it's called. No, no, it doesn't. But for example... Uh, I know, it's got, it got uh, these kind of switches, sorry. Yeah. yeah, we also have the pedals on the rear. So you basically mm. have on each side two different inputs. So way more inputs that you, that you normally need, I would say. Um, we are also right now one of the first manufacturers who illuminates the encoders. You can also change the color of the encoders to whatever you want. Uh, through SimHub, through your own software? Currently, we have our own software, which currently only supports the Alpha because um, the Pro still needs a little bit of work because of the whole display. You know, integrating okay. a display is, yeah. is, is pretty difficult, but currently it runs all through SimHub, yeah. First time we're actually expanding, we are not only having wheels in our portfolio, we're actually bringing other stuff. And of course, fitting to the Alpha, which was launched two months ago, is a DDU because some people definitely want an additional display in front of their display um, for more information. So we brought out a DDU. I'm not gonna like, you know, dream of anything. I'm just gonna tell you, it, it pretty much does the same as other DDUs. It's just like our interpretation. So you have a full aluminum housing. You have a uh, laser engraved, of course, the logo at the bottom. You have a full glass shroud around. In addition to the display, you can get you can get uh, the beacon lights ah. there additionally you can mount so them the, these are extra these are extra these are like you, you buy these and then you exactly. buy these. so basically mm. this is the ddu 
And mm. this is th these are the beacon lights. Okay. Um, beacon lights are meant, you know, for TC indication, ABS slippage. Can, can we put two motors so that they move around? No. <laughs> for example, for yellow flags? <laughs> no, that, uh, that's not <laughs> planned, no. Let, let him get a hold of that and he'll build two motors in it so that they move around. <laughs> the nice thing about the beacon flags, it, it's, it's really an addition to the DDU because it connects directly to the DDU. You don't need, like on many others, you need like an additional box. Mm -hmm. And here it's directly connected to the DDU. It's a USB-C, right? It's a USB-C connect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, not USB -C, uh, it's not USB protocol, it's just mm -hmm. a connector. It's not meant to have a USB plugged on the inside. But more interesting is the control center. You have 20 illuminated buttons. You have, again, adaptive beam technology. So you, you push it, you twist it, you can change the mode. This is more PC-related stuff. This is more car-specific um, changes you can do. It's a full aluminum shell. It actually w weighs a lot. It weighs, uh, I think, around 600 grams for, for such a, a little body, I would say. We're really proud of our acrylic sheets. So this, this is actually, it's not laser or anything. These are acrylic sheets you can glue onto the button. And if you change your mind after some time, you can actually, you know, just rip it off and put a new one on there. So you're not fixed to anything. And we supply 212 different icons you can choose from. So it's probably enough. something for everyone. And then what we're actually most proud of is the magic arm behind. And it, the magic arm is something we have on all our gadget equipment and it's super easy to to mount it to your aluminum profile rig because you just put a t-nut in there then you screw on the magic arm and then as you can see i can move around the magic arm freely i can move it into every position i want like let's say my seating position is more where you are then i would tilt it more to the side mm -hmm. and then i just fix it again it's fixed i can use it it's it, it's so easy to do yeah, I can be very mean to it and it doesn't... No, it, it, it will not. It will not move. So that's the control. Uh, last thing on the control center, maybe for people who have a lot of a lot of stuff on, on their rig. Um, it's difficult to show for the camera, but there are additional three USB slots on the rear you can use. So there's an integrated USB hub on the inside. The problem with my phone is when I'm racing, I'm throwing it away. Don't worry, I'm not going to throw it now. <laughs> <laughs> so usually I, you know, I, I drop it next to my rig, but then you get like a, you see a message pop up and you're like, oh man, I got to read it. And then on the straight, you're like searching for your phone and everything. It's not convenient at all. What we have uh, made here is basically um, an induction charging ring. And I have an Android phone. I don't think it is, it doesn't have MagSafe. So and, uh, I, iPhones from 12 and higher, they have a magnetic uh, built in on, on the iPhone and you can just put it on and it, it, it charges. Uh, for, for example, Android users, we have uh, with motorized arms, so you just put it in, it will grab it and it's fixed and it will charge. And it's so convenient while racing because I ha with the magic arm again, I can mount it in a position that my iPhone with Face ID recognizes me while driving. And I can just um, point it at me. And while racing, when I need to look at my phone, I just look at my phone, like swipe it up. I can see the messages, whatever. And on the plus side also, every time I finish a racing session, my phone is charged up. <laughs> right now we have produced so much um, products that we need to like calm down a little bit and get things going. Uh, we also want to try right now. We still have like a delivery time of two to three weeks, which is definitely too much. And we want to bring it down. We okay. want to try to build up stock so people who order have it on the next day. The only thing I can tell you which which is in the works is we currently have an alpha for around a thousand euros in Germany and we have the new pro for 2100 euros and there's a gap in between mm -hmm. and the alpha right now doesn't have a display so maybe maybe there's something which will fit in between those two prices. All yeah. right. Okay, so this has been very interesting, a company that we hadn't looked into uh, until now, um, and it's fantastic. Uh, we have been trying to get in, uh, to, to, to get this, uh, this interview for two years. Yeah. Now at last it's yeah, worked. Finally. We have had so much, they have had a lot to do as 
you can see we have had a lot to do, but now it works. So, hey, Bavarian Simtech, a German company producing very interesting engineering. And the future brings Acetec, maybe a DDU on the alpha and uh, shorter delivery times. That's always a good idea. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.